If you've been into a conference room around the world, you probably have seen their product in the middle of the conference room table. It's a little uh, micro, uh, a thing that uh, you can talk to and listens to the conference and lets people remotely dial in. Uh, it's the Polycom speakerphone. But today they're uh, doing a lot more and we're meeting with one of the co-founders uh, about what, what they're doing more than speakerphones for conference rooms. I'm Jeff Rodman. Um, I'm co-founder and uh, fellow at Polycom Corporation. Um, I was uh, raised as a uh, uh, always had hobbies of electronics and music, which has kind of have kind of followed me through my life. Uh, professionally, I've been involved in image processing and sound processing uh, through uh, uh, professional uh, video. Uh, I was on the launch team at PictureTel uh, video conferencing out in out in Boston uh, a number of years ago. And uh, about uh, 20 years ago, a uh, partner and I started Polycom Corporation with the aim of focusing first on audio and then on uh, the ability to do graphics and live video. We have in the process since then actually reacquired our old company, Polycom. And uh, the, uh, the Starfish phone that almost everybody recognizes is just one of our, one of our uh, product lines because we're focused on the entire human communication picture. Wow. Well, what does that mean, human communication picture? You know? Well, it, it <laughs> means, you know, when people are communicating with each other, when they're, when they're collaborating, generally the most important thing that you want to get across is your voice, right? Yeah. And you want, to, you, you want to have that clear, uh, especially as people are talking from around the world, so you have different accents from this country, from that country, you still need to understand them. Once you've got that, the second most important thing is actually, you know, people used to think it was video. It's actually what I want to show you. If I have voice and I can show you the images, uh, maybe a video clip that I'm producing, uh, that's the next thing. And then finally, to get a full sense of who it is you're talking to uh, is uh, the addition of video. Yeah. So it's these three brought together uh, as, as a seamless integration that really uh, comes closest to putting you in the same physical space as the people you're communicating it's with. It's interesting because Rackspace is, uh, when, when Rocky and I joined Rackspace, you know, we were the first employees in California. Uh, I think there was one other employee, so we were number two and number three. Now we have hundreds of people here. And we have hundreds of people in, in London and Tel Aviv and Sydney. Uh, we have, we're becoming a global company now, is where I was going. And now we're using a lot more of your products, and it, you're right, there, it's still hard to hear on a lot of these conference calls because the speaker might be over in the corner and the, and the polycom's here on the desk and you can't hear them very well because they're echoing. And Sorry, is audio done is the question, I guess. <laughs> it, 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 it's far from done, and, and you're actually describing a number of the reasons why. Uh, if you're in a well-controlled environment in an acoustically treated space so you don't get a lot of echoes and you have a single uh, conference module or speakerphone in the, in the center of the table just a couple of feet from you, it's, it's a good experience. But most of us, especially these days, don't have all of, those, all of those privileges. As you say, the microphones can be scattered far from where you are. Uh, you can have a single speaker. You may, uh, heaven forfend, uh, be on a narrow band uh, telephone call with us, uh, people in other countries, yeah. which is kind of the worst of all possible worlds. Yeah. So what, one of the things that Polycom is doing, uh, both for the present environments, uh, is uh, developing physical architectures and, and signal processing behind it to optimize the audio, to optimize how well your voice is picked up and sent through the channels and how well it's reproduced at the far end. We are also putting a lot of effort um, into looking at where are the work environments moving to. Um, because there's a, a big trend, as you know. Well, you, you, you've been at this company from two people through hundreds, so yeah. it, it, it's an interesting trip. And it, um, so it, a, a big trip to a distributed work environments, yeah. people working from the house, people who are uh, forced to, well, are uh, forced to work from individual cubicles within a corporate headquarters. Uh, which introduces its own range of problems. Or and calling it, I call in to sales or to meetings all the time from my uh, cell phone in my car, right? It, it'd be one thing if we all had uh, consistent environments with nice microphones and nice speakers or headphones, but a lot of times I, I'm in a place where I can't control it. Right? 
Right. And, and so it, 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 that's exactly it. And, and it's not just the acoustics, right? It's the, um, I guess, the, the social, the interactive aspect of that. Um, anybody who has participated on a video call, which is, which is typically high definition audio, great, you know, uh, good, good fidelity, with a cell phone, know, you, you know that you are one down in that conversation. Yeah. Uh, as much as everybody wants to hear what you say and respect it, you've got to break in in a way you don't have to in a live meeting. Yeah. Um, and you're, you yeah, know. Yeah, because there's social contracts, right? If you're in a meeting, you can just raise your hand, hey, I have a, and, yeah. and they can call on you, right? It's really easy to sort of uh, gesture that I want to add something. Like, but when I'm on the phone, I, 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 it's really hard to do that little micro movement that doesn't really uh, get picked up by the microphones, right? right. So, so you have to you have to make a uh, you have to make a conscious effort, and you say, "Excuse me, excuse me, uh, Kent," and you have some back and forth, and finally everybody quiets down. Somebody says, "Yes, Robert." So right now the light is on you, right? Yeah. And you say what you were going to say, and then there's silence again because they're not sure they can be in red, and the the flow picks up. But it's not that smooth, uh, you know, ocean waves lapping together as you have in, in a fully interactive conference. Yeah. This is not inherent in distance communication, but it is inherent in a lot of the decisions that have been made to this point and how these distance systems uh, operate just within themselves. So what, uh, what kinds of, th you're running the R&D lab there, right? What, what kinds of things are you trying to think about to make communication easier in these uh, multinational companies. <laughs> we are, well, it's, it's some, some of the things, you, you want to know what you're aiming for uh, but before you actually pull the trigger, right? So looking at what are the environments that people are talking in? What, what are the problems that we're trying to solve? Um, in the case of collaboration or conferencing, uh, those are typically uh, that you, you may have a, a multi-point call between a large conventional conference room, uh, three people talking from cubicles in a fairly noisy area with conversations all around, a couple of people uh, from home offices with a baby in the next room. Um, and uh, what you want is to recreate the experience of everybody being in the same space. Yeah. So the, the, there are a lot, of, a lot of individual questions that come out of that, and that's, that's where a lot of the fun comes right now. Yeah. It, it used to be more of a, an optional environment now it's mandatory. Yeah. So we're putting a, a, a lot of effort into that. Are you, are you thinking of doing a, a, a piece of software like Skype kind of thing? The, you know, our team is always on Skype 24 hours a day. And right. We just uh, look at our phone and, and we can get caught up on the, with, the, with the team, right? Uh, right. Because what, what you want is not only a system that works with the different physical places they, they are, but also with the different um, networks, the different uh, solutions that they may want to integrate. So you, you may have some Skype participants, you may have some uh, serious enterprise users who are also participating in the call, as you say, high definition, you know, a couple of, couple of screens. Um, and you want those to be able to tie together um, as seamlessly as you can, or at least deliver to each endpoint the best performance it's capable of. Yeah. So Skype gets Skype quality and enterprise gets enterprise, that, that sort of thing. You know, I've, I've seen, I've talked to music producers recently and other people who are uh, uh, doing audio processing and they, and they said what, what's really happening is compute has gotten cheap enough to do uh, pretty good processing even in a pair of $200 headphones. Is that something you're seeing is now you have a, a, a capabilities that you didn't have 10 years ago to, to uh, get better microphones because the cell phone industry is invested in that and, and get better processing and, and devices because uh, all of a sudden you can buy a cheap computer from Intel or from ARM right. or something like that? Yeah, no, it, it's, it's a, a very timely question because that is, that is one of the things that's, that's been happening continually almost since we started the company. So our first product, um, you, you know, one of the one of the essential pieces in a, in an audio link, in an open air audio environment, is you need a really good echo canceling system. So the far end doesn't hear their own voice coming back to them. Yeah. Um, as uh, pr individual processors have become more capable, um, we went from a single microphone system to a five microphone system. We now have a system that can support uh, several hundred microphones. 
um, it, it, more, more of a rack, uh, a rack system for larger environments, auditoriums yeah. and that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, it, it's, um, it's a continuing flow between what do you si decide to put in the, the personal thing, the endpoint thing, or the network thing. Uh, we, a lot of our products uh, are, what we've been doing is expanding into the network, into the cloud. Um, and there is an advantage in pushing as much out there as you can without sacrificing performance. Because, you know, you're away from all the, the questions of did I charge my battery. Um, uh, the less that this device has to do, the more likelihood that you're going to be able to stay on the call. And the more likelihood that uh, you know software updates are automatically taken care of if, if it's on the network, and uh, maybe you, if you come up with a, a better algorithm, you've got the performance in that processor where this one isn't quite up to it. So, what, what kinds of products should we expect to see from Polycom? Are, are you going to uh, still stay focused on that? conferencing kind of workload or are we going to see you in some weird uh, toy or something? <laughs> uh, <laughs> our go our focus has always been uh, toward the enterprise. So we learn a lot from what's happening in the consumer space. Yeah. But enterprises have some fairly different requirements in security and robustness, uh, in uh, just general performance and flexibility, the ability to manage. Right? You've got an IT organization that's on the hook for managing, what, 50, 500,000 endpoints. Yeah. Um, they're having to come to terms with uh, the bringing your own device uh, kind of world. So what, what Polycom has done is we've generated solutions for, for everything from there to the full immersive room. Right, the full 380-inch screen environment. But uh, so, so we've got uh, our, our overall uh, solution is called Real Presence. Uh, we have a mobile version that runs on those and a pad. We have a, a laptop version. We have a conventional, just pure desktop speakerphone, if that's a uh, tabletop, if that's what you want. One of the interesting things about that kind of space is now that you have all these people there, uh, all these devices, how do you manage them? You know, typically what, you're, what, what they'll do is they'll bring in, you know, a few people to do nothing more than say, oh, uh, Ann is talking, I'll turn on camera number three, click, yeah. and then uh, that might. Ultimately, you don't want to need to do that. Yeah. You don't want to have to add staff to manage this. And you want people to feel free to say, hey, I, I had a couple of questions. For, let's dodge in here and talk, yeah. and, and I'll, I'll call you know, Ann on the, on the phone, and we'll get her in. And ideally... We want to have Anne virtually sitting right there. Yeah, that's how this works, and it's pretty impressive. But I'm sure that room costs a million dollars or something like uh, that. They, 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 they do something add up. Something crazy. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a pretty fantastic room, and there's not many headquarters that are that good. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the one of the product lines we have is exactly that. I, when I'm talking about this, uh, this spectrum or continuum of solutions from the from the handheld to the immersive room, that immersive room is exactly that. It's it's the full fledged room. It's uh, multiple tiers of seating, uh, high definition screens so you can patch in, um, it, it, 4K uh, content. You know, so it's. Uh, as you say, uh, it's not the cheapest thing we make, but man, is that a fine experience. Yeah. The sales cycles probably on that are pretty long. Like Apple's building their new headquarters, I'm sure they're meeting with people like you to say, okay, we want five conference rooms like that to, that has that kind of capabilities. But you're t that, that thing's not going to open for two more years, right? So right, yeah. It's a long sales cycle, probably. So you, you, I, you've got a kind of a mix of sales cycles, because you, I mean, in your business, it's the same. I'm sure you've got existing customers, and you say, we have this new thing. And they say, oh, okay, well, actually, we're just adding a new room. We'll take that. Because you've also got the contracts, the relationships worked out. Um, if you're going into a whole new customer and saying we have this new thing and it's a, it's a big bunch of money, they're going to say, okay, let's get in some more executives and start discussions. And yeah, it's, it's a couple of years. Yeah. Um, what, you mentioned cloud computing. What, it, what is cloud computing letting you do that you couldn't do a decade ago, I guess? Uh, a couple of things. One is that um, as companies are becoming more distributed, you now have you know pe people from all over who are wanting to join in. At, at its simplest, it's a two-way call. But the next thing you want to do is we've already invented Anne, so I'm going to bring her into this one. Um, if we take the uh, older traditional way of uh, doing a multipoint call, I will have a video system that has built into it a multi-way bridge. So for three people, that's not bad. 
you start to get to four, six, eight people. Let's say my system has a problem. Suddenly, the other seven people on this call are also hung up because my IT guy kicked out my jack. More likely, I kicked out my jack. So by, again, by centralizing the major functions in the, in the cloud, you're able to make your whole facility much more robust. Uh, you can also coordinate uh, management, uh, scheduling, um, record keeping, uh, you know, uh, billing if you're, if you're a service provider and running a system. Um, and, and so Polycom has been in this part of the business for, for quite a few years now as well, being able to tie multiple endpoints together. But uh, as the move is becoming more to the cloud and even the intensive video processing um, is suitable for, for a cloud location. Um, it, it really uh, allows these systems to scale much more rapidly and much more economically. Yeah. What's the challenges for uh, Polycom going for the next year? What, what, are you guys, what should we expect to, to see you guys do? Uh, we're doing uh, some really exciting stuff in the way of uh, enabling personal interaction. Uh, one of the, I, I mentioned we were, have been looking at uh, the new environments that are coming along, the cubicles and the surrounding conversations. Um, we are introducing uh, what we call the acoustic uh, bubble and the acoustic fence. And what this does is it's a system, it operates within uh, an existing desktop phone, um, existing laptop, uh, a, a real presence laptop system. Um, it recognizes when you're talking and when you're not. Um, and uh, it just passes your conversation into a meeting. And it quiets everybody else when you're not. Because the, the biggest problem that you have, I mean, it, you, you've been on calls where somebody's participating from a loud environment. Yeah. Or and, you hear their typing uh, yes, on, a, right. on um, the keyboard. That's the third thing we have, is, is a, a, a system that's uh, integrated in, in the real cloud um, that detects uh, the, uh, typing and silences that specifically without quieting the whole voice. But here you've got, uh, when you listen to, um, if you're on a conversation with somebody who's surrounded by other people, you hear two things. You hear them when they're talking, and then you hear the conversations around them when they're not. And it's an interesting psychological effect. This is something that really hasn't been exploited before, uh, uh, before Bollycom's doing this. And that is that your mind tends to want to sort of track one of those conversations. You know, oh wow, they have a dog like I do. Yeah. And, and you start to get distracted because you have the whole, the whole conversational trail available to you. If you have the acoustic bubble or the acoustic fence, which performs the same kind of function, but for a perimeter that you can define, so everyone inside that goes to the, can transmit the other side, everyone outside that is quieted. Um, this allows you to, in, in How a, do you define that? Uh, do you say, uh, you know, what, what, pick up voices within two feet of the microphone? Very good question. So yeah. it, it, the acoustic fence, how do you define a fence with fence posts? So what we do is we space acoustic fence posts, basically microphones that tie into a central system. Um, and uh, they, may, they detect the difference between you know, who's talking in the center and who's talking outside of it. So it's really a cool system. But both of these are really, uh, really shine when they're in some of these new environments where you have adjacent people doing different things and you don't want to poison their conversations uh, yeah. by, by injecting all of this irrelevant uh, sound. Apple just announced a whole bunch of new, uh, they call it continuity features, i.e. The, the phone call comes into your phone or it can come into your laptop, right? Yeah. Or in, into your desktop in a cubicle. Well, now my microphones on my laptop aren't all that great and are picking up the room. So I, and now I need one of your things to make my laptop work properly, right? Yeah. So you're probably pretty excited about that trend. <laughs> I, I'm excited about anything that makes audio and video performance uh, integrated communications really be, uh, better. And yeah, obviously looking at what can Polycom do to make an Apple system or a Microsoft system uh, another partner system even better than it already is. And uh, typically, um, there's a lot.
Well, thanks for uh, what you're doing. Where do we learn more about what you're doing? Uh, Polycom's website, as you might guess, is polycom.com, P-O-L-Y-C-O-M. Very cool. Thanks for coming in. And Robert, thank you very about much. What, what the latest is going on. It's been a pleasure.